What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and we're on my home lake, Kentucky Lake and uh, I'm with a guest, this guy right here, that's Jake Lawrence. You've seen him from the live stream, you've seen him in my video on Pickwick and uh, it is hot as balls here in Kentucky, literally. It's like 90 something degrees and we're gonna go try to catch some bass but we're gonna try to do it a different way than probing the ledges. So. Jake, uh, he's been guiding out here and he's been catching a few fish and uh, we're going to be with him today and see what kind of techniques he uses. Hopefully, I can catch a few fish. If not, you're just going to watch Jake fish, but uh, we're going to film some other videos and stuff. Do me a favor, if you love the content on the page, smash the like button. Be sure to share and uh, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button because I promise you uh, there's stuff on here you don't want to miss. We literally made it like 75 yards and my favorite hat blew off. And I'm pretty sure it sunk. And I'm pretty sure it sunk. Uh, Casey, six cents. Uh, I'm going to need another black hat like that. Because I got this bald spot back here and I'm going to be somewhere. I'm pretty sure it sunk. Oh, shit. We have found it. We have found it. I'm not gonna lie, I'll, I'll do like the hood on this. Dude, that's a catfish, that's not my hat. But uh, I do like the hood, but I'm in Kentucky and I'm afraid people would confuse me with a clan member. So uh, Jake has scooped her up. So did y'all see that guy in that big boat with a small penis? I just did. So we're gonna get back to fishing. Hopefully we don't lose anything else before we get out there. Jake's already gonna go scrounger up shallow. So kind of explain uh, just why I got the GoPro on while we're talking. Kind of explain what we're, not a specific spot really, but what we're kind of looking for. Yeah, so in the fall, of course, and really uh, anytime outside of the spawn, in my opinion, uh, you've got to get around the food source. And anywhere um, that you can find the food source, you're oftentimes gonna find bass in the fall late summer, uh, early fall stage, like what we're in right now, everything's kind of in transition and a lot of the fish are scattered. But again, if you can find a concentration of a food source, we literally haven't even gotten back here to where most of them have been. And we've already seen one gizzard get blown out and, and one great big one blow up. You'll find these small little concentrations. And, and generally, it's no secret, generally speaking, in uh, the fall, a lot of these shad will migrate to the backs of these bays and, and congregate up. The, the issue with that is, it's, you know, with the, the late drawdown that we always have, usually starts about 4th of July, these things get really, really shallow. So what we're concentrating on are, are little ditches. And, and what these are caused from is a winter pool, most of this that you see back here is actually a mud flat. It might have six inches. 10 inches of water or something like that. But anytime that you've got a really hard rain, a lot of runoff, uh, it'll cause or, or over time create a little ditch back here. These big ones are congregating in this ditch. I feel like what it is more than anything is they just don't feel comfortable. There he is. Got one, Jake. Got him. Right on cue. God, I can't keep up with him. And it's a god dang drum. Holy smokes. It is big, but it is not a bass. Poor man's permit. <sighs> Boat flip him. Well. It's actually, uh, you know, that's that's interesting and, and something that I've, I've ran into here quite a bit in the last trash couple fish. weeks. Is... God, I thought that was a good one. He freaking rocked it. Damn like, oh. drum. Poor man's permit. Four pounder out of that tree right there on a six inch swim jig last week. No, it was earlier this week. Tuesday when I, with uh, William. Smoked it. He wouldn't eat a chatterbait. I threw six or seven times 
with a, a chatterbait and I never would buy it. Well, look, 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 look at look at that fish blowing up those gizzards right there. I don't know, I don't know if y'all saw that, but a bass come up and just blew up by like, ten gizzards you had out there. Bad. Jake has finessed one and I'm just gonna run right over the top of it and knock him off. <laughs> there we go. Little squirt. But he is a fish in a foot of water in the middle of summer. <laughs> I'm nipping at it just a minute ago. Here's a question, why are you throwing a Nico rig over a wacky rig? I'll be honest with you. I, I wish I could answer that honestly. More confident in Where I, I really felt like I was confident in my answer there. I so, feel like it, I like a Nico rig on a little bit bigger baits. To, to answer it the best that I can, is because that's what I'm getting bit on. Right. I, I've thrown a wacky rig and I, I think one reason. You know, I'm not, um, I, I wasn't really recording, I was just asking. Yeah, no, one, one reason is, is I can fish this a little faster. Obviously, I, I'm not one to, to really finesse and fish real slow. But you can tell, I mean, it's super shallow back here, fairly clean, uh, and there's not, generally speaking. There he is. Got one. Oh, a good one. Yeah. Bateman that caught him a maybe janked. No. Got a big old head on him. Yeah, Get in here. Uh, dude, that fish choked. That jackhammer. It's got about a three pound head and about a two, pound and a half, <laughs> two pound body. Look at that. But you got that jackhammer right there where you should. And that fish really just loaded up on it. He didn't just hammer down, it just got real heavy. But that is a typical summertime Kentucky Lake bass. He's up here trying to get that belly full. He needs it, so. All right. <laughs> That's two, Jake. I don't know if we can get a hundred like we did at Pickwick, but we're gonna try. Guys, I'm gonna go over my uh, chatterbait setup real quick. Actually, it's a jackhammer setup. Uh, I've used a lot of different rods, and then I've been using this uh, Six Sense uh, Lux for about a year now, and I started throwing chatterbaits on it uh, earlier this year, and I've also been throwing a, a sticks. Uh, they call it uh, the utility sticks, I believe and uh, it's 99 bucks it's really good but it's softer than this rod and i actually like it better in the spring when those bites are really subtle should be good you know what i mean jackhammer oh god damn Oh man, a jank. Oh yeah, on the jackhammer. Woo! First bass of 2019 is a jank. And he was hooked good. I don't know, what do you think, five pounds? Ain't gonna be much more than that, boy. Woo! He absolutely knocked the dog crap out of it. Just talking about old Brett Hot throwing all day for those five bites. Woo! That's all I can do. All I can do is go. Woo! The first jaint of 2019. The jackhammer. Kentucky Lake. But uh, seven one, medium heavy, fast action. So it's got some tip to load up and that fish I caught on it, uh, it really didn't bite it hard. It just kind of felt weird and pulled back. And uh, you see how that was hooked. I am throwing 17 pound Sunline Assassin. That's kind of my go-to chatterbait Can line. I catch this one real quick? Yep. All right. So you can't even, can't even tell y'all about my 
jackhammer set up without Jake having to catch one. Is it a good one? Yeah. He's got a good oh, one. Oh, gosh. Look at him cruising off. No way he'll bite again. It's like he was never even hooked. He was another long, lanky one. Golly, come on now. Well, uh, <laughs> since you interrupted me, that's okay. Uh, Real I'm using on my uh, on the jack camera is a 631 Daiwa Tatula SV, and uh, yes, it has a shallow spool, but uh, I can make really long casts very easily with this. And if there's wind blowing, I can kind of pinpoint that jack hammer where I want to. So it's just a really smooth combination. Came off from the tree. Yep. Spinning rods, Kentucky Lake, summer. Can't believe it. Look at me skip. I'm over here trying to take an Instagram story and Jake has just got him a good one. Oh man. Check him out. Not a bad one. Man, these fish are thin back here today. Look at that. Little VMC. Captured him one. Just a nice, healthy bass. They're a little on the skinny side back here, but you know, that's not all that uncommon for uh, early summer, late fall fishing. These fish, when these uh, fish are in transition, it's oftentimes it's because of the shad. Jake has kind of been whipping me on a, a Cinco bait on his nico rig and you know i'm the bait man so i've got that stuff but i've got some of these new six cents uh soft plastics this is the clout 54 this is the ned fry 46 i've got it in my hand and you know instead of nico rigging a cinco i'm actually gonna go a little bit different i really like the action on this thing it's a little bit more finessey and we're in some clear water but if you never nico rigged i'm going to kind of show you how to do it uh, basically um, you take your wacky rig tool and you run your o-ring on it just kind of like you would a wacky rig the only difference instead of going like halfway up the bait I'm going to kind of do three quarters of the way get that o-ring on there see how it's kind of the rings down toward the head and this is a 332nd tungsten weight and I like these tungsten ones because they're more more dense than lead and they're smaller so I'm gonna push it up in this plastic, which plastic on this baits are really good. And it's gonna hold this weight in very well. Grab my spinning rod here. And uh, what I've got on here is an old O-ring that I'm gonna remove. And this is an owner sniper uh, finesse hook and it was designed for the Nico rig. I'm just gonna run it under the o-ring here and i want that hook point sticking up toward the tail of the bait so when that fish grabs it right in the roof of the mouth and that is a nico rig so a little different than a wacky rig but it's going to make this uh worm really stand up kind of on its head and should get some awesome action out of that tail all right jake has decided to give a uh, spot a rest and we've moved into the back of another bay uh, we're going to try the same pattern, see if we can repeat that. Uh, we got so far in the back, we were literally in a creek. And uh, it was crazy to see all the life in there. And that's kind of how the ecosystem evolves. I mean, this is, it's hot out here. and uh, But you could feel how much cooler that water was back there. Tons of gizzard shag, creek chub. We could literally see a lot of the bass we were throwing at. But we were actually caught more out in front of the flat. Hey, I even landed one on a jackhammer, so... Uh, we're going to do the same thing, uh, try to repeat the same pattern, different part of the lake. Uh, I'll stay tuned here on the Bait Man TV. Like a lot of people are just going to hunt for the clearest water, but mm, you... I, I want dirty water. Now, I don't want like mud, mud, like what's over there, but... And it's going to get a little cleaner as we... There's a good one. Good one. Well... It ain't a jank, but we're recording, that's all that matters.
Oh, yeah. Had to check my camera see if I was recording. That's number two on the jackhammer. Netfish actually smoked it pretty good. Me and Jake were just talking about different places on the lake and the dirty water preferential. That fish might keep, he, or he's gonna be 14 and a half. Yeah, pretty close. The old Zacco on the back of the jackhammer. Jake has got it more than two. We're in the nursery. Yeah, we're gonna have to find the baby mamas. Need your baby mama. Choking it though. Golly, look at that. Mm hmm. Almost a double. Dude, I like it. There he is. Jake's got another one. A little better one. Late summer bass. Oh, this is a pretty good one. Baby Jaint, solid two and a half, almost three pounds. Yeah, man. That fish is healthy. Yeah. Thick, not a blemish on it. Pretty late summer, early fall bass. Well, Jake, so far we're, we're so far I'm kind of here with Jake, and he's he's, he's in God mode, but. Uh, if you guys want to get a hold of Jake and book a trip here on Kentucky Lake or Pickwick Lake, uh, where else do you fish at, Jake? I've actually this uh, this year I've been all over the place. I've been Texas, uh, Mississippi, Alabama. I've been all over the place. I like to travel around. That's actually one of my favorite things to do is to, to go to a new body of water that I've either not ever been to or, or you know an area that I haven't fished in a long time. So I travel all over, primarily Pickwick and Kentucky Lake, but certainly get in contact with me we can always work something out best way to get in touch with me uh, of course I'm on the water just about every day about 200 days a year um, if you will just get on uh, Facebook uh, Jake Lawrence and, and uh, you can always send me a uh, message or uh, what I would actually prefer you to do if, if you have the opportunity is to get in touch with a bait man and uh, he can actually get get you in touch with me uh, on my personal cell uh, again I'm you know, on the lake most of the afternoon, or but uh, I can always get back in touch with you late at night. Dude, is that a dead armadillo? It is. Holy cow! I gotta get a video of that. Whether it makes the video or not. Oh, it makes the video. That is a dead armadillo. the heck is going on here in climate change i'm gonna catch him <laughs> oh my gosh i really did catch him <laughs> guys i have hooked an exotic species i have caught an armadillo in the foot with a jackhammer <laughs> see you buddy Oh, my ribs are hurting. <laughs> I'm just glad I didn't stick him because that hook's a good hook. And, uh, <laughs> I've, ne I've not seen one yet in Kentucky alive. Big one. Big one. Big one. Jake's got a big one. He has got a big one. I'm going to get my line in. You need the whole boat, I can Ellie? I don't think he even knows he's really hooked. Oh, dude, that is, that's a jank. He's actually not quite as big as I thought he was. He's got a big head on him. Good one. Check this out, guys. Whoa. Check out the red pinchers. See if I can carefully get this. I don't want to hurt him. 
Look at that. Mm. I'm gonna let this go. I wanna show y'all what this what this fish spit up. Talk about matching the hatch. Now I caught that fish on a, a black Cinco. But check out how bright orange those pinchers are. It's green pumpkin, green pumpkin orange on one side and my goodness that's i mean that's like lobster orange mm -hmm. on the other did we just bust a myth that crawdads are only orange in the spring that's awesome how about that i want to do about 150 bass trips a year this year i'm gonna do about 100 there he is finally got me one Ooh. Good. Not a jaint? Oh, he had one with him. Did he? He did. Oh, yeah. That is my first bass on the six inch clout 5.4. I changed it up from the Ned Fry because Jake was doing so good on that Cinco like bait. Dirt shallow, feisty little guy. All right, buddy. There's there's the the first bass. Are you recording? I am recording, Jake. Uh, that hook is a VMC weedless Nico hook. I believe that's a number one. I had to borrow one from Jake, and that is the deal. Them suckers are sharp. Jake and I are going to call it quits. We have had an epic day here on Kentucky Lake fishing shallow. I got my hat back. I also caught an armadillo, which has never happened. I've not seen anybody catch an armadillo on YouTube. Uh, it was dead, so I guess that's a snag. Uh, Mike Long would probably get a world record out of that armadillo, uh, but me, I just let it float back to where it should go. But Got to play uh, with that new six cents clout 5.4. I uh, caught a couple bass on that, caught some on the jackhammer. Jake spanked me on his Nico rig. And uh, dude, that was awesome. I mean, I love ledge fishing, but when it's hot as balls out, and it was, uh, it was a nice treat to do something totally different and get your mind thinking outside the box in these dog days of summer. But uh, you know, wish it could have got that epic fish catch on the gopro uh it started raining so i put it away jake catches one about three and i flip that clout down there and catch that really good fish and uh jake did a really good job of going and grabbing the gopro and just pressing some buttons till it started recording so uh you're probably going to see that right now we had to put the camera away for a little rain shower and he caught a good fish and we had some followers and i got a jake by dropping this clout stick bait right behind it and we may ruin my gopro but i'm going to get this fish i got a white line on here dude was that awesome to what jake <laughs> i mean this ain't a, just the six pounder or nothing but see how he's got that thing eight i literally dropped it right beside his fish as it was jumping this bass ate it Dude, that is awesome. Jake, I think we're gonna call it a day. I hate to do that, but I'm afraid we're gonna run some camera equipment. We'll run the GoPro till the batteries are out. Awesome shallow water bass. Can't believe you stayed on. Usually fish like that's gonna come off. Guys, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. More awesome content coming. I do live streams almost every Saturday night and Tuesday night for Tackle Tuesday. Thank you all so much for watching the video. God bless you all.